Welcome back to the channel. We are here December 15th. I know you miss me, but I'm back now. We're going to go over this week 15 first look, okay? Everything I'm going through, all first thought. We're going to revisit this later in the week, and then I'm, go I'm going to zero in on the plays that I really, really like. But for now, just going off like what we've seen in the first 15 weeks, we're going to go through each position and decide where the value is, where we're going to lean to, uh, are we going to pay up at quarterbacks or pay down? Are we looking at high price running backs? We're going to see who's in good spots. All right. So starting off with the quarterback position, Patrick Mahomes, 7,900 going up against New Orleans. It doesn't matter what the opponent rank that he's going up against because he is the one of the greatest quarterbacks already ever, ever to play the game. This man has insane talent and you see it week in, week, week out. Um, had two tough matchups between Denver and Miami. Still produced numbers. Um, at seventy nine hundred, you're getting a little bit of discounted price, so you should take advantage of that. That's just because of the New Orleans offense. Um, I think they'll obviously put points on that defense as well. They're going to be in that um, New Orleans Thunderdome. They're going to have to go up against Taysom Hill. This could be a very high scoring game. Um, because the weakness to KC is that running game. And obviously, I think Patrick Mahomes has enough talent and weapons to go up and down um, on this New Orleans Saints defense. So definitely Patrick Mahomes viable at 7,900. I don't know if you want to lean more to, towards Taysom Hill at a cheaper price, uh, just because the fact he has that rushing upside at 6K. Um, and like I said, the weakness to KC is that running game. Um, back to back weeks were over 20 points. As you see, this rushing defense for KC is 26 ranks, bottom of the league. So Taysom Hill, Kamara, get him in your lineups. Um, you might want to lean this way if you want to do a game stack. So we'll put him in there because I already like Taysom Hill in this situation. Obviously, we like Mahomes, but if I'm saving 1900 and I could spend up elsewhere, that is a great. Great value. Lamar Jackson at 7,500, coming off an insane game against the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Browns still can't beat Big Brother. And I know how they was building the Browns up in the media every single week. Oh, this is, the, this is it. This is it. And then Baltimore came and slapped him in the face. Lamar Jackson, even like him going to the bathroom or whatever he's doing with a cramp or whatever, came back, finished him off, had two rushing TDs. Uh, passing TD, um, and this is a great matchup against Jacksonville. They're weak in the rushing department and passing department. This could be a huge J.K. Dobbins game um, because I think this is very sneaky. You know what? We're going to already go there. J.K. Dobbins, I don't know what price he's at, but he's about to be a lock. He's about to be locked. I'm already jumping to the running backs, and I didn't even mean to do it. But just looking at this because people saw what Lamar Jackson did, um, on Monday Night Football, they're going to be all over him and forget that Jacksonville's weakness is this rushing game. And you saw him get 13 carries, 53 yards in the TD. I understand they have a little running back by committee with him and um, especially Gus Edwards, not really Mark Ingram. But this matchup is too juicy, and he's getting starters work at 5,900. I think he's going to be, you know, not really looked at, and he can have a breakout game. This is a rookie that can have a breakout game. All these rookies every single week keep popping out of nowhere, having huge, huge games. Um, last week was um, Jonathan Telly finally coming out of nowhere. Um, he's been building up a little bit after coming out of the doghouse. Now, I believe this week is going to be J.K. Dobbins um, at running back. And now we got to hop back to QB because we got to go down in this list. Russell Wilson against Washington. I want to stay away from this. He had his get right game against the Jets. Now he's got to go up against a formidable um, defense um, and Chase Young and the Washington football team. I want to stay away from him. I'm not paying 7300 They did drop his price, but it is going to be a slugfest in that game. And maybe Washington can eke out the win. Um Next is going to be Kyler Murray going up against Philly. Philly's defense has turned up lately. They're trying to make a playoff push uh, with Jalen Hurts at the helm, and they really showed um, what they could do 
against New Orleans. And now they got to go up against Arizona. Um, Kyler Murray has fell off. So there's not that much confidence in me going to Kyler um, and like trusting him in most of my lineups. He's definitely still has that ability, as you can see, the rushing attempts each and every game. Um, he, no, no TDs as of late. He's been fumbling as of late as well. Uh, but it was a decent performance against the Giants. Eagles have, you know, they're up there with their defense as well. Um, that's that's what they lean on. And Jalen Hurts just finished them off with some nice plays to Alshon Jeffrey and um, rolling out the pocket. So I think Calamari, Kyler Murray is viable, but definitely not one of my top uh, picks at QB. Okay. My 7K. Next, uh, Deshaun Watson against Indianapolis Colts. Um, this is a tough matchup. Uh, last time he faced them, he had 24 DK. He almost got the win. They came up short. So I can expect him to do something similar, but this is a game where he's going to be with, with a lack of weapons. Okay. Uh, in Houston, what they got at wide receiver now? They Cooks is questionable. Uh, Kiki Kuti um, should be fine. Uh, there's no Will Fuller and there's no Randall Cobb. So you're looking at Kiki Kuti, Cooks, who's a questionable. Um, Chad Henson, who used to be a former Jet, um, is getting some love now as well. He had seven for 56. So he's coming on. They're, these are all like little slot receivers. So it's not a great, great um, matchup for him. I want to lean away from it because Will Fuller and Cobb aren't there. Those are two big options for Deshaun Watson. And I think we can find better quarterbacks, all right? Um, for example, Ryan Tannehill going up against Detroit um, Lions. This is a poor pass D. As you can see in the last game, this is why I'm on that narrative with J.K. Dobbins. Um, you see the Tennessee Titans win against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Tannehill had a decent day, but the key was Derrick Henry. So I think J.K. Dobbins can replicate that somewhat and definitely have a you know huge game at that price. So in this game, I think Tannehill bounces back, um, connects with A.J. Brown, connects with um, Corey Davis, connects with Ferkser or Jonu Smith. I don't know if Jonu Smith is healthier or not, but just connect with those three guys. I think Tannehill is a viable 6,700 QB at that price. That is very nice. Tom Brady, Tom Brady, we were on him last week. I liked him. He didn't like kill it, kill it, but I told you they're going to, they're going to build this team up. They, they did what they needed to do against Minnesota. Now they get another easy opponent against the Falcons. And we know the Falcons defense can't handle the weapons that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have. Are you absolutely kidding me? They got to go up against Godwin. They got to go up against Antonio Brown. They got to go up against Mike Evans. They got to go up against Rob Gronkowski. They got to go up against, like, do I, you want me to continue? I can continue. Look, we're going to play some Tom Brady. Um, obviously, I can't put him in the lineup, but we're going to play some Tom Brady at 6,600. I like that price. Um, this is a very good matchup. I don't think Atlanta can keep up. This is, if you're already doing bets, Hop on that line now. Give me Bucks point line because Atlanta is absolute trash. Matt Ryan is absolute trash. And they're going to be looking for a new quarterback soon. What I seen from Matt Ryan last week was putrid. You cost me money, man. You cost me like $600 because you want to throw three interceptions. Mind you, the last drive, Herbert threw an interception. Then you decided to throw an interception. Like, what are, you, what are you doing? You had the game with 30 seconds left. Like, come on, man. Uh, see, I got a little PTSD on that, Ryan. I'm not, he's no, he's out of my book. Never again. I want to see, I'll never want to see him again. Um, Jared Goff against the Jets. Come on. Come on. It was a get right spot for Wilson. This is a get right spot for Jared Goff. This is another quarterback we're looking at um, against the Jets defense. We can we can pair him up with Cup and Robert Woods, and you're looking at a very nice stack. We suck against tight ends as well. So Higby or Everett, one of those two, is going to be a huge, huge play this week. Um, Jets against tight ends, you already know. You already saw what Darren Waller did to us. Uh, week in, week, week out, Gasecki did to us. Like, come on. Definitely like 
um, Jared Goff at 6,300. Kirk Cousins, we're going to stay away from him against Chicago. It's the in-division battle. It's going to be ugly. I do not like that. Drew, Bre Drew Brees is on IR. Phillip Rivers is a game manager. He's working on that. Um, they're going to rely on that rushing game. It depends if it's a shootout similar to that Green Bay. That's when you'll see a little more of the old Phillip Rivers come out. But you're not going to see, you know, 20-point performances from this guy unless he's chucking three, four touchdowns. And that's not the type of guy he is right now. Um, he's relying on that top-tier offensive line and their running backs, and that's how they're uh, winning games and, you know, relying on that defense. Uh, next is going to be Jalen Hurts. We I told you about him, bro. Last week, this man, get him while he's hot. He's going up against Arizona, a very, you know, not a formidable defense at all. I mean, they got to Daniel Jones um, last week, but Daniel Jones was immobile. Hurts is the opposite right now. Daniel Jones is not ready to come back. Hurts, this could be another prime spot for him at 5900 Before he gets to a super, super high price, let's get on it right now. He did decent in the passing game, provided you with over 100 yards rushing. Um, no TD, but a TD can happen this week. Uh, I like that as a prop as well. Jalen Hurts at 5,900 is a quarterback we're going to look at. Uh, we're skipping Stafford against – no, no, we're not. No, we're not. I forgot. It's Tennessee. Why am I tripping? Uh, we, you got to watch the news on him. Be very vigilant on Matt Stafford because we know how Tennessee defense is, especially passing defense. They give up big, big games to wide receivers. So I don't know if Kenny Galladay is 100% yet, but he is viable. Marvin Jones is viable. TJ Hawkinson is viable. This is a very sneaky um, stack and um, to have for this week because that Tennessee um, pass D is very, very poor. We're going to stay away from Tua Tungvaloa. This is a, I think this is a loss for Miami. When you got, we, we saw it before. You can't put Belichick against a rookie quarterback. You saw what he did to Herbert. They destroyed that team. You, what do you think he's going to do to Tua? What do you think he's going to do to Tua? He's going to do the exact same thing. So if you're, if you're betting, um, I'm all over whatever the line is at on New England. Give me Bill Belichick against a rookie quarterback. The man is 12 and one, and he's gonna keep winning, like 13 and one. Like this is ridiculous. Hop all over that. We're not playing to him. Trubisky um, is still the starter in Chicago, and he he's a dual threat. He's a dual threat. He's passing a little bit better. He has to watch the turnovers, calm down on the fumbles. Keep the interceptions low, and he is he's going to get you over 20 DK, okay, because he, he gives you some uh, rushing ability. He can definitely run it in the end zone, and he has some weapons to throw to in Allen Robinson um, and uh, Darnell Mooney, and he has two nice tight ends in Cole Komet. So Trubisky, that's a nice play at 5,500. We got some cheap guys here. We got Hurt, Stafford, and Trubisky already. Uh, Cam... I don't like his. I don't like this game for him. I think if anything, the New England defense is going to step up uh, against this tough, tough Miami um, defense in their corners. Um, unless Cam gets some rushing opportunities, then that's the only way he's going to reach value. He's doing this good game, bad game thing. But um, you're going to need Cam to get in that red zone and get touchdowns that way. But I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of staying away from Cam Newton. I don't really like that. We don't speak about – I'm not going to say his name, but I, this is his name. We're going to skip him. Now, Andy Dalton against San Francisco, we're not doing that. Gardner Minshew against Baltimore, we're not doing that. Wentz is um, not the starter. He's the backup. And that's pretty much it for quarterbacks. So we like – I already have Taysom Hill. We like Trubisky, Stafford, Hurts. Jared Goff is in a great spot. Tom Brady, Tannehill. There's plenty of options here. Um, I can see Lamar Jackson getting a lot of ownership, but we're going to stay away from that, and we're going to hop on the running back. And speaking of running backs, we're on to the next section. I already spoke about J.K. Dobbins. We're going to start at the top with Derrick Henry against Detroit. This is another bad, bad, bad run D. Jacksonville's like 31st. 
And Detroit's right behind them. 29th right here, rush defense. We're gonna we can go right back to the well. I definitely can see a performance where Derrick Henry is gonna pop off a 40, maybe a 50 spot. Cause that's how bad this Detroit Lions run defense is. Putrid. Putrid, 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 putrid. Um, let me take him out, but we definitely like Derrick Henry. Dalvin Cook in a tough matchup. You got two 9K guys. You got to decide which one you want to choose. I'm leaning more towards Derrick Henry, obviously, because the matchup is better. Um, last time he faced Chicago, 30 rushes, 96 yards. They fed him, and it wasn't enough because this is a top-tier rush defense in Chicago. You want to? I think you want to stay away from Dalvin Cook. Um, Alvin Kamara. Spoke about Taysom Hill. We're going to pair him with Alvin Kamara at 7,400. Um, he came on finally, got you a TD. I know he hurts him a little bit, but this is a very juicy, juicy matchup where Sean Payton is going to need to use his number one option. Um, and what, what was the key for Alvin Kamara was the receptions, okay? Seven receptions, 10 targets. 44 yards. This is how he's going to make up for the lack of rushing, okay? He's going to get those um, catches and get in the end zone. He's a mismatch for every defender on that defense, okay? Maybe Tyron Matthew, mm, kind of even, but mismatch everywhere. Uh, Jonathan Taylor against Houston. They bumped him up all the way to 7,200. I'm sorry, guys. We missed it. We missed it. I did say I liked him last week. I, I, I should have locked him in, but... If you see these numbers jump up, then you know the, the big game is coming because you could have seen it against Green Bay. Okay, 15 points. All right. He's looking good. They trusted him. He's he's now the number one. Houston, he got you a receiving touchdown. Didn't get you 100 yards. Got you 22 DK. That was a sign like, oh, okay, the real big, big game can come. And it did. And it was the Las Vegas Raiders. He came out, showed out, got you two TDs. Now, this dude is looking like what we expected at the beginning of the season. He is um, ending the year strong as a rookie. Taylor, very impressed. I like what I see. Um, James Robinson has been letting people down um, the last couple weeks. Um, didn't A lot of people expect him to like smash against Tennessee. And this is another bad matchup against Baltimore. They have a tough run D. I understand that the Browns was able to, uh, were able to run on them. That's because they have a top-tier line. They have a way better line than Jacksonville. And they have elite running backs. They have Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Both of those running backs are way better than James Robinson. Okay? I can he Maybe he gets in the end zone once, but I'm not paying 7100 for him. Um, David Montgomery has been coming on very strong as of late. Three games in a row with over 25 DK. Um, they're gonna have to feed. They're gonna feed him again. He's getting rushing yards. He's getting receiving work. This is how the Chicago Bears are gonna stay alive. This is gonna be a very tough game between Chicago Bears and Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota has an okay rush defense. They're like middle of the league, as you see right here. So Montgomery is definitely viable at seven k. Um, but that might be a, might be too much of a high price. And I'm liking Kamara, Henry, and Taylor way more in J.K. Dobbins. Um, Miles Sanders is coming out the woodworks, and this is great. This is good news. He had a breakout game against New Orleans. He can do it again. And the reason because of that is the threat of Jalen Hurts. The threat of Jalen Hurts rushing the ball. They're, they're, they're doing RPOs, okay? And pretty much Hurts is, de Hurts is deciding if he's going to keep it or he's going to give it to Sanders. And this is, is allowing the linemen to get double teams on uh, the linebackers and getting his linemen for deeper um, on that defensive side for blocks. And that's how Sanders was able to break that 82-yard run. The offensive line got to that second level, created a double team, and he was able to take it all the way to the house. So Miles Sanders, um, is I like him at 6,900. He let me down all season long, but now... Thank God for Hertz and this the threat that he provides is gonna improve him as well. Okay. Chris Carson against Washington. Stay away. Antonio Gibson, we have to wait and see on the news um about him. We are not hundred percent sure.
But if he's back, he is a, a he's a nice option. Cam Akers. Um, the Jets have a good run defense. Um, he's this one's tough. They don't have a good run. Defense. We have an okay run defense. It's it's because our passing defense is so bad that that's why the numbers of rushing are down because you could just throw on us. So, um, Akers probably gets a touchdown. I don't know if he goes super, super off, but he definitely is going to get an end zone against us. I'm just not sure if he's going to have one of those 30-point days. And it, it, it definitely could. Rams are going to get up big. They're going to rush the ball. But then that factor that factors in. You got Akers. You got Daryl Henderson and Malcolm Brown. If the game is over, they're going to look towards those other backs and save the rookie. Okay? So that's a little bit of a tricky uh, situation there. DeAndre Swift, 6,400. I think you take advantage of the little price dip just a little. Um, still was able to get you a touchdown against Green Bay. Uh, he needs more touches. This was his first game back in a couple weeks. That's why he probably was limited. I think they're going to ramp him up um, uh, against Tennessee. So that 17, that seven touches was going to be 14. So I, I like him um, at 6,400. Uh, Madison, there's no need to look at him. Zeke Elliott, he had a nice game against Baltimore. You see that they're, they're feeding him. Bad performance against Cincinnati. Uh, I, we're staying away from Zeke. We're really staying away. Um, San Francisco has a decent uh, rush D, and they have, they have a good um, defense as well. We're staying away from Zeke, man. He killed so many fantasy owners. Um, all year long, and we're not going to go to that well unless it's a prime, prime spot. Uh, Ronald Jones, he is questionable. So if he's out, we're going to look at Leonard Fournette. Uh, Want to go surgery to repair his broken. What? I didn't even notice. Fractures his pinky and it went over. The injury has now been confirmed. Uh, so we, we're we going to find out for the news on that. We're going to find out for the news. Hopefully Saturday we'll know what um, the options are, the backup options are, because Leonard Fournette was a healthy scratch in the last game. So that's thrown off some people. And now you got Ronald Jones with an injury. This could be the Fournette game. Um, Cause he's still here. He's still healthy. 4,500. If you need Fournette, this is a prime spot at a very cheap price to take over against Atlanta. A, not a good uh, rushing defense. So, Hey, 4,500 starting. I like it. I like it. If we're going to take that value, I'll definitely take it. Um, and then we're going down. Clyde Edwards, Alaire, we're staying away from him. Him and Le'Veon Bell are sharing carries. I don't like this at all. We want uh, potential, and this is not – You're. it's a guessing game with um, CH. It's a, it's a big guessing game. Mostert against Dallas. We're not really looking there. McKissick is only an option if Antonio Gibson is out. Uh, we got Gaskins on COVID-19. Kenyon Drink against Philly is a no. Uh, Naeem Hines has a decent option um, to be a very viable punt running back because of the passing work that he gets. They use all these backs with the Colts, okay? Um, they got a nice one-two punch. Taylor and then Hines has a nice, nice burst of speed. Um, and change of direction. And in the receiving game, he is very, very dangerous. So he is viable. Uh, Carlos High, we're not looking at him. Don't really care about David Don David Johnson or Duke Johnson. But, like, okay, if David Johnson is out with the COVID, then Duke is an option. Uh, we saw what he did earlier, you know, a couple weeks ago. Didn't really, you know, surprise us at all. He was kind of very corny. And besides that one Thanksgiving game, and that was only 17 points. So you took over as the lead back and didn't do anything. I don't trust you anymore, okay? Uh, Boston Scott, no. There's not really a cheap guy I'm looking at besides the Leonard Fournette if he's 100% injured. Um, Miles Gaskins, like I said, he has COVID, but then DeAndre Washington will become the lead back. And he got work, but didn't really take advantage of a good matchup against KC. Now he gets a bad matchup against New England. And I'm not looking forward to that at all. And Gus Bus. Gus Bus. 
Gus Bus against Jacksonville. I spoke to you about J.K. Dobbins. Gus Bus is definitely uh, one of their red zone options. And as you can see, he did very well against Cleveland. This could be easily the J.K. Dobbins game right here. I think J.K. Dobbins can break out. But when they get into those, that 10, 5-yard area, Gus Edwards comes in unless he's tired. And then he's going to get the touchdown and vulture it. Okay. So you got it. You're playing with fire, but I think the rookie shows up this week. Um, and that's pretty much it for the running backs. Uh, we'll find more value later in the week, but for now, that's how, that's how it's going to be. Wide receivers. Wide receivers, we're going to pair with our quarterbacks. Always correlation. Correlation. Um, I said I liked Patrick Mahomes, so I like Tyreek Hill. Um, I like Miko Hartman, uh, Sammy Watkins. These are all options going against New Orleans. Um, no, has it, he's been, he's been consistent. 8,800 Tyreek Hill can get you a touchdown in any play. It doesn't matter. Uh, definitely have him in your lineups. I'm not sure if he's a hundred percent lock, but he is someone you need to have. He might be seeing Lattimore coverage. I don't think I don't know if they're gonna lock in on that. They I don't know how Saints are gonna attack this dangerous, dangerous Kansas City Chiefs um, offense. So I'm not sure if Lattimore is just gonna lock lock in on one guy, and he can't lock in on one guy because Tariq Hill is too fast, too fast. So he is definitely an option. DK Metcalf in a tough um, matchup, just with the defensive line bringing pressure on Russell Wilson. Uh, will he have enough time to get the ball to DK Metcalf? Will this be more of a Tyler Lockett game with the short routes um, or David Moore with the short routes or work, working the tight ends with Disley and Hollister? So um, these higher price wide receivers are like a little bit iffy right here. Calvin Ridley, uh, we gonna we need news on Julio Jones. If Julio Jones is out, Calvin Ridley is a number one option, as you saw last week. Eight receptions, 12 targets, 124 yards, and a TD. That is a very prime performance. Um, DeAndre Hawkins, I like him. I think this is my fate, one of my favorite top tier wide receivers right here. We saw what the, um, these wide receivers are doing against the Philly defense. I think um, he can have a very nice advantage against Darius Slay. He's more physical, great um, in you know in traffic catches. DeAndre Hopkins at 7,900. I like him. We'll, we'll pop him in there. No, no. You know what? I got something better. Shout out to Chris. We're going to do, we're going to put AJ Brown up in here. We're going to put AJ Brown up in here against Detroit. Um, come on. This man is a freak of nature right here. Uh, seven for 112 in a TD. Easily can do that again this week against Detroit. Um, I think all the Tennessee players eat. All of them. Feed them. AJ Brown. Derrick Henry, Corey Davis, all of me, double stack it, triple stack it, get you some Tennessee Titans against the Detroit Lions. Um, Allen Robinson against Minnesota. I like Tampa Bay against Minnesota, so I like Allen Robinson against Minnesota. This is a very, very poor pass D, and he is the, he is the number one target on Chicago. Trubisky needs him in Montgomery if they're going to win games, and he is getting fed. 9, 13, 7, 13. Those are all the you know last four weeks of targets with three touchdowns. So definitely, definitely a he's in a nice spot. Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. We're playing with fire here. I don't trust Kirk Cousins, and especially I don't trust Kirk Cousins against a top tier defense. Okay. So you're gonna have to figure out which one is he on the because I don't think both of these guys go off at 7,300 um, against Chicago's defense. This is going to be a very tough matchup um, right now. Jefferson is his favorite target, but Thielen is more of the red zone guy with 12 TDs. He really looks for him in the red zone. So I would lean Thielen over Jefferson for this week. Uh, Michael Thomas um, had a good game, not a great game. See, if it was another quarter, uh, quarterback throwing to Michael Thomas, obviously I think he would have had a better game because he had eight catches, 84 yards. Against Philly, it's a smash spot. That's why I like DeAndre Hopkins. But if, like I'm saying, if this was another quarterback, he would have had a, a way better day than eight for 84, okay? Because obviously he was getting open. He was catching the ball. 
it was a mismatch. It's a clear mismatch. Um, and I see the same thing for DeAndre Hopkins this week. Cooper Cup, we love. We're going to put him in there. It's the Jets defense. Throwing Cooper Cup, throwing Robert Woods. We already know the tight ends between Hig Higby and Everett. This is a very prime spot. Get right spot for Jerry Goff. Um, Julio Jones, waiting on news for him. Um, ruled out last week, but if he's in the game, then obviously this Atlanta offense is on a, is you know jumps up another level. Okay, but we're we're not hundred percent sure about that. Robert Woods, I spoke about that. I love the double stack with the Rams. Tyler Lockett, not a very good um, spot against the Washington football team. I don't like that as much. But what we do like, we like Terry McLaurin. We like that this elite wide receiver coming off of two bad games against Pittsburgh and San Francisco, and this is a situation at 6,600 where we're going to lock this man in. Yeah, I said it. I said it. So we see two bad games. Everyone's forgetting about him, and he gets a – did he get a big price drop? A little bit. He's in the middle between 6'5 and 6'7. He has, he's at 6'6. Six, six. We're going to turn McLaurin against Seattle's bad pass defense, I think, he can have a very good game. I don't care who's thrown to him. I don't care if it's freaking Alex Smith, but he has a little calf injury. Then they got the backup. Haskins, he still feeds Terry McLaurin. It doesn't matter which quarterback is in. He is an elite wide receiver. Okay? Um, next, we're going down Mike Evans. We love him at 65. You can get these Tampa Bay guys at a very cheap price. I see it right now. This could be the breakout game. This is, might be a game I can go Evans, Brady, and Godwin, or or Evans and Brown and Brady. You can mix it up. Mix it up. I definitely uh, like all the Tampa Bay options. Mike Evans at 6,500. Uh, Godwin at 62. And then if you're getting Antonio Brown, how cheap is he? You get Antonio Brown at 5,400. Wow. He's getting targets. He's getting targets. 813. Had a little slow day against Casey and then back up to five. Um, this is a very cheap price for someone at, you know, I don't, he's not the same Antonio Brown, but he's he's up there. And just to be the third option, you might as well be the same Antonio Brown because it's, you can't guard them all. You can't. Like, there's too much talent on this team. Um, we're going back up just a little. Mari Cooper, not really looking for him. Um, yeah, we're not, we're not really feeling that. He got a touchdown last week, but we're not expecting that much of an explosive awesome offense from Dallas against San Francisco. Um, Brandon Ayuk and, uh, Debo, well, Debo Samuel left the game. So Brandon Ayuk becomes the number one again. And we seen, look at this, look at this. Wow. Since week seven, 20, 23, 19, 20, 24. And if Debo Samuel's out, and he's the number one. This is another option to look for. We're going to throw him in there. We're going to look for Brandon Ayuk. We know the Cowboys' defense is not good. Nick Mullins just needs some time to get the ball to this very, very explosive um, wide receiver in Brandon Ayuk. The 6K guys are looking pretty nice. The 6K guys are looking very, very nice this week. Um, Galladay is questionable. We're not sure about him. Cooks is questionable. We'll all know this uh, later in the week on Saturday after I look at the injury reports. Um, Corey Davis is a good option going up against Detroit, but our favorite option is A.J. Brown. But Corey Davis at 58 is a cheaper option to have, and he can have an explosive game like he did against Cleveland, like he did against Baltimore. Uh, we like Corey Davis. Uh, Marvin Jones is super viable if Kenny Galladay is out. Against Tennessee, we're gonna wait on news on that. Marquise Brown has what is this three touchdowns in three games? Is he is he breaking out? But it's not even like he's going off. So, like you get a touchdown, you don't even have a hundred yard game, and you're still not getting twenty DK. What am I paying for? You getting you getting touchdowns, and you're still not getting over twenty points. I don't I don't get that. Um, I think this is more of a uh, running narrative. Like I said, against Jacksonville, we're going to stay away from him. T.Y. Hilton usually goes off against these teams. 
He usually goes off against Houston. He usually goes off against Tennessee. He had a horrible first half of the season, and now this man decides to come out of nowhere and tell Michael Pittman to sit down, and now he's back to being the old T.Y. Hood. So he has four touchdowns in the last three weeks. It's annoying. He's still at 5500 It's a very, very cheap price. We want to put him in. Um, if you're doing 50 to 100 lineups, definitely 5500 T.Y. Hilton is too cheap, and he is worth an option to throw in there. Um, Antonio Brown, 54 is cheap. Kiki Kuti is cheap against Indianapolis. Um, he got peppered with targets the week before, and this is the same matchup against Indianapolis. So he, this is a weak point. That middle area can be a weak point. With Kiki Kuti, and since especially since he's going to be the number one option, Chicago keyed in on him. But Indianapolis, um, they they remember what he did last time. But he's still an option because Texans don't have much else. They really don't. So Kiki Kuti, I like him at fifty three. Um, Shark with Minshew back, but he's going up against Humphrey. No, we're taking that away. How's Michael Pittman been doing? Eh, he had a break, little small breakout against Green Bay, and he's come back down to earth. The targets are there, but the receptions aren't um, contested targets. Just it's it's T. Y. Hilton now, and I really wanted Michael Pittman to break out. He has the size, he has the speed, but T. Y. is still the number one. It's hard to say because I thought this man was washed, um, but he's just like a Deshaun Jackson type, you know. Russell Gage is only option if Julio is out. Uh, Sammy Watkins, not really going there, but he could be. With with Casey, you never know. Mahomes could just choose to throw to Watkins all day long. That's it's up to him. It really is. So you're never gonna know when he when Sammy Watkins is gonna go off. If, if you want to sprinkle him in there in a couple lineups, the targets are there, but that that's up to you if you want to play a fire. Jacoby Myers. Um, Decent slot option against Miami. If we want to, if we want to stay away from Xavier Howard and Jones, um, I'm not really looking. That's not really a great spot. Uh, C.D. Lamb is still a okay option uh, against San Francisco in that zone defense. Uh, I think Dalton can pick that apart. We'll see. I'm not too sure. Uh, Crowder, as long as he's healthy, we like him working in the middle. Because Ramsey's going to either stay on, he's probably going to stay on one side. And then we always have Crowder coming across in the little slant routes. Um, he is the go-to guy for Sam Darnold um, at 4,400. The potential is there. He did it against Las Vegas. Um, he can do it again. But it's not it's not a great matchup because we know the Rams defense and that D-line is going to get after Sam Darnold um, on every snap. Next, uh, Rager has been coming on a little bit uh, as of late. Just getting sprinkle targets here and there, getting some rushing work in the red zone. Was hasn't been able to get in the end zone, but if he is, he's going to reach almost near, you know, to that twenty point plateau to what you want. Uh, Sneed, not really looking for him. Christian Kirk had a good first half, um, but we're not really looking towards that against Philly. Um, Sanders, Chad Henson. If you're looking for a punt play at 42, Chad Henson, consistency the last two weeks. Um, they're going to focus in on Kiki Kuti, like I said, but Chad Henson can go under the radar. Five for one on one, seven for 56. Um, not, not getting an end zone, but 18 and 12. I can take that at 4,200. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can find a cheaper, cheaper, cheaper play. Uh, Mooney is viable on a deep ball against Minnesota. Um, not looking at Demir Bird. Don't want Perryman. Uh, Lynn Bowden, I think he's been getting used lately. He came on um, the last two weeks. This is someone to look out for, okay? When you're seeing this little jump up um, in production, I understand that, you know, this is a very bad matchup for Tua, but they're going to need to throw the ball to somebody. Uh, Lynn Bowden is is definitely going to be a wide receiver that is not going to get keyed on by Gilmore. Um, and he can have a decent game. He can have a decent game. Uh, we saw what he was able to do against Casey, 7 for 82, getting some rushing work. Um, 
did decent in the Cincinnati game. Um, he's getting, you know, an uptick in snaps. So Lynn Bowden, they traded for him. They're going to use him. I like him as as a cheap, cheap punt play. Uh, not looking at Denzel Mims. Hardman could be a play. And I think that's it for wide receiver unless we see some crazy. Okay, no, no, no. There's one more play. Is this the dude? Is this the dude or is it the other one? Because there's two Sims. Yes. Cam Sims. Okay. Cam Sims is an okay option. There's another pump play to look at. I saw what he was able to do making some very tough, tough catches against Pittsburgh. And um, I understand Haskins probably going to be throwing the ball, but against Seattle, it's a very prime matchup. All right. And then we're going to move over to the tight ends. Okay. Last but not least, look at these tight ends. Kelsey, you should put him in. Like, he should be a lock. He is the number one. He's a wide receiver. Okay. Okay. Look at these numbers 29, 16, 30, and 30. He's a wide receiver. He's Patrick Mahomes' favorite option. And he's a mismatch for anything that the Saints have. Like, pretty much. Already has over a thousand yards receiving. We, we, this is why you pay up AK. And I'm willing to pay AK for him. Mark Andrews wasn't able to get in the end zone, but did get targeted against the Browns. So this can be a game. I, I like him at 5,500. Um, Kittles on IR. Hawkinson, I spoke about him uh, against Tennessee. Let's make sure Stafford is healthy. But if you want a tight end to get you over 10 DK, lock him in every single week. Every single week, you know, 16, 15, 13, 10. He's not, you know, game breaker, but definitely giving you enough points to last you in these tournaments and uh, boost you up, okay? Gronkowski is a viable option against Atlanta. Um, he's not going to get as many targets as he was before earlier in the season because, you know, they have all these weapons. But in the red zone, Tom Brady knows his favorite target. And this, this could be a Gronkowski two catches, two, t two D um, TD day. So it may, it could be, you never know. Logan Thomas is a solid option. We rather have um, Alex Smith as a QB because, as you can see, nine for ninety-eight and six for forty-three. But um, he's a viable option. He was doing good at the beginning of the year, um, he, all year long. Logan Thomas has coming out of nowhere. Uh, Goddard and Ertz are sharing work, and I don't really like that. Um, you're going to have to flip a coin between those two. Goddard was able to get four for 43 in that game, but it's a, it's a coin toss of which one you really want. How cheap is Ertz? Zach Ertz is at 3,400 and he had two catches, three targets. They might be working him more and more, um, in the lineup in, in the play. So you're not too sure about that. So I'm going to stay away from those two. Um, I spoke about Higby. I like him. Um, Jets are literally the best matchup to have um, for tight ends. And he, I'm going to put him in as a tight end at 3,800. I think he is a steal at that price because this is the number one um, matchup for tight ends is, is the Jets because we're horrible. Um, John o. Smith, he's healthy. Him and Ferkser is going to be a toss-up. Which one um, is going to get that look in the red zone? Um, and then after that, if you want to throw Ertz in there, you can. Dan Arnold has been kind of consistent as of late uh, with a 20 DK performance against the Rams and then um, came back with a TD against the Giants. I like him as a 3,500 um, tight end and Ertz Smith as well. Um, they're going to be keying in on his wide receivers with Thielen and Justin Jefferson and Ertz Smith. Um, as long as he's playing, as long as he's healthy, is a huge factor, size and speed. This man provides out of Alabama. Irv Smith Jr., I like him, uh, came on um, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And this is definitely another matchup where he can get um, a, tight, uh, a touchdown. And then any other options? Everett is an option. Jordan Reed is an okay option to have. Um, with Kittle on the IR, Cole Komet um, is becoming the number one tight end now um, over Jimmy Graham, back-to-back -back games with seven targets. That's what you like to see. So he could be you know, due for a big touchdown game. He got you 14 points against Detroit, eight against Houston. 
maybe 20 this week. Cole Komet is the rookie that they paid for. Um, I like him as a punt option at tight end. And that's all I got for you guys this week, man. Let me know how you feel. Let me know who's your number one target um, in each and every category. Um, let me know who's your number one quarterback, your number one running back, your number one wide receiver. Comment below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I need interaction. I want the likes. I want the subscriptions, everything. Also, follow me on um, Instagram and Twitter at MessengeSD. If you want to contact me, follow me on Instagram. At, ask me questions, okay? I will answer them um, and give you some ideas from there. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate the support. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. And peace out.